Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new observations from the very famous Event Horizon Telescope of the beautiful Centaurus A galaxy that doesn't actually look that impressive here because this is what you would see with optical light. But if you were to combine the observations from the visible light, from the X-ray light, from the infrared and from the radio light, you would suddenly be faced with one of the most beautiful objects in the night skies, also one of the brightest as well, the gorgeous galaxy known as Centaurus A. And the most recent study involving the EHT, Event Horizon Telescope, the telescope famous for taking this beautiful picture of M87 black hole, decided to investigate Centaurus A galaxy and specifically the center of the galaxy by using the extreme magnification powers of this telescope collaboration. But first, let's do a little bit of history. What exactly is Centaurus A? This galaxy is actually one of our neighbors, and this is sort of what it looks like if you were to somehow use a normal telescope to try to take a look at it. It doesn't look like much. And because of this, after its original discovery in the mid-1800s, up until 1950, it was actually completely ignored by almost everyone. It did not look like much or like anything important. But once the scientists figured out how to take a look at various galaxies in radio waves and also by using some other frequencies, this galaxy transformed majestically. It literally became one of the most important objects in the night skies simply because of the amount of radiation it was producing, especially through its very powerful astrophysical jets. By 1954, scientists realized that it's very likely that a lot of this magnificence is actually produced because of the merger of two galaxies approximately 100 million years ago. And for the first 90 million years, there was really nothing happening, just a lot of mixture and a lot of activity. But suddenly, about 10 million years ago, that's when the galaxy released these powerful and extremely beautiful astrophysical jets that are now visible from really far away. Now, interestingly, not so long ago, I've talked about this beautiful radio map created by the Australian Telescope uh, Foundation known as CSIRO. If you actually click on the link in the description below, you'll find this map as well. And here, it literally shows us what the entire night skies, at least in Australia, would look like in radio waves. Something that our eyes are not able to see, obviously. But if you were to look around here, you would discover some areas of night skies that are a little bit brighter than others. For example, this is obviously the Milky Way, which of course shows us the central region of our galaxy where there are a lot of different radio sources. But there are some other patches here that don't actually make sense. And one such patch is right here. This is only visible in radio waves. And this, as you can imagine, is the Centaurus A galaxy that we're talking about today, which is pretty much the brightest source of radio waves close to planet Earth. And because of this, Centaurus A is technically a radio galaxy and it's also an active galactic nucleus galaxy. The objects that usually produce something like this. So here's another example from another galaxy known as Hercules A. And notice how these unusual astrophysical jets are extremely long. They're so long as a matter of fact that they form some of the biggest structures in the universe. With some being millions of light years across, way larger than even some of the largest galaxies. And it just so happens that one such galaxy is right next door. Now, because it only started emitting these jets about 10 million years ago, it still has ways to go before it acquires these really, really long jets. But even now, they're actually long and powerful enough to be visible if you do have some sort of a way of looking at this in radio waves. Now, in case you were ever wondering how these particular radio jets are produced and what exactly happens inside of them to produce so much radio energy, well, it's what we refer to as synchrotron radiation. And the way this works is, if you were to take any charged particle, such as, for example, an electron, and if you were to essentially make it somehow spin around something, or even further go into some sort of vortex-like formation, so kind of like what happens inside these astrophysical jets, for example, because the electrons are forced to go in a spin or in a circle, they will start emitting what's known as the synchrotron light or synchrotron radiation that's normally in radio waves. And when there are a lot of electrons or a lot of charged particles and also a lot of spin involved, that's when you get a lot of radio emissions, which is basically exactly what we're seeing right here. This is how these astrophysical jets that emit radio waves are formed. But even today, the scientists are still not entirely sure what exactly produces these astrophysical jets and what sort of effects are responsible for causing such tremendous speeds of these particles. But the scientists are certain that it has something to do with the black hole in the middle. For Centaurus A, the black hole is actually really interesting. It's way, way more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, but way less massive than the one in M87. It's actually right in between. 
it's about 55 million masses of the Sun. And the recent analysis from the Event Horizon Telescope was able to really zoom in on this area, identifying the exact location of the black hole, while also being able to see extreme details of the jets that have never been seen before. Here's actually what the previous image looked like from a few years ago. But here's that same area zoomed in even more and analyzed by the team from the Event Horizon Telescope. This is actually about 37 times more zoomed in and literally shows us what happens extremely close to a typical massive black hole when the jets are just created by the effects from the central black hole, with the black hole itself being located somewhere inside of this white circle. And in terms of the distances involved here, well, this right here is the distance from the Sun to the Voyager probes, so this is pretty far away. As a matter of fact, our solar system would only represent a tiny, tiny, tiny point in the middle of this. But considering the distances involved between the galaxy and what we're actually looking at here, this is a pretty tremendous achievement. One of the reasons it was actually very difficult to see any of this in detail before is because Centaurus A is more or less in the southern part of our planet. It has a declination of about 43 degrees to the south. And so it's very difficult for most of the telescopes to see this. But the team in the EHT managed to figure this out and thus managed to analyze this galaxy in detail that was previously impossible to achieve. But unlike the observations from the M87 black hole, the main purpose for this particular study is to really try to figure out what starts these jets. As I mentioned, it's not clear what produces them and why they are the way they are. So for example, one of the major confirmations from this study, which is also more or less visible in this image right here, seems to indicate that the jets are brighter at the edges. Notice how they form this unusual formation, almost resembling a letter V. And since this jet brightening is definitely an important feature of other jets as well, it means that they're produced in a very certain way, but the scientists at the moment are not clear on how it's done just yet. Most likely it has something to do with the very powerful magnetic fields that are formed by the very powerful accretion disks around these black holes. But the exact details of what happens here and how the jets are produced are still a little bit murky. But these observations from EHT do suggest that any explanation has to take this edge brightening into account. It seems to be an important feature of a lot of different jets, including the ones around M87 black hole. But the amount of this edge brightening as visible in this picture is actually quite surprising. So it does mean that it's some sort of a very important feature that was previously not entirely understood. And so this is the mystery that the EHT team is hoping to solve in the next few years from now. At the same time, one of the more important discoveries here was the fact that the jet itself seems to resemble the jet from the M87 black hole in terms of the structure and in terms of the way that it propagates through space. We've actually discussed these findings in one of the previous videos that should be somewhere right there. And the main discovery here is that the jets for the most part seem to resemble one another, except for of course the actual scale. One is way larger than the other. With the other important identification and finding being the fact that they now know exactly where the black hole is located. They haven't actually seen it just yet, mostly because of the frequency used in this study. But the scientists in the paper believe that if they change the observational frequency from 228 GHz used here to several terahertz, they could definitely observe what happens around the black hole in this galaxy as well. Which is very likely what they're going to be trying to do next. They're going to try to observe this in higher frequencies in order to get even more resolution and to then hopefully see the black hole in this galaxy as well. Although in this case, it would really help the scientists to get a few more telescopes in their telescope network with some sort of a space telescope being the best choice. But unfortunately, the only space radio telescope, Spectre-R, the Russian-German collaboration that observed the universe in various frequencies of light, ceased operation a couple of years ago. Now, there might be a way to maybe re-enable it somehow, but for now, it's not really planned. But without a space telescope, it might be difficult to observe all of these details. Either way, these observations and future observations from the EHT of this beautiful Centaurus A galaxy are actually going to be super exciting in terms of helping us discover and understand what happens in the middle of various galaxies and how astrophysical jets are really produced. For now, check out the paper in the description below with all of the relevant links in there as well. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support your channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.